All right, everybody, we're gonna be jumping into the remaining calm, but first, before we do that, we're gonna spend about three to four minutes watching a motorcycle incident. I want you to keep that in your mind because when we go over the next lesson and the next lesson and the next lesson, uh, we're gonna be kind of calling back to uh, this incident here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'll go ahead and get off uh, the screen and we'll go ahead and watch. Right here, we were all coming up. We were trying to stay really tight. We're on a country back road. Uh, speed limit is 45 right through here. So we're staying as tight as we can. Right there, that car just pulled directly in front of a motorcycle, causing him to swerve to the left, swerve to the right, lock his brakes up. As he did that, a Can-Am spider behind him was not able to brake in enough time and ran him over. It was absolutely probably one of the worst things I have ever seen in my entire life. Hey Siri, call 911. Oh my fucking God. So all it took was three seconds of somebody not paying attention to cause this accident. This lady didn't pay attention. She literally just turned into her driveway. And for anybody saying that you were able to actually see a gap that she was able to drive through, I'm going to put a zoomed in view in here where you can actually see that she had absolutely no room to pull in front of this vehicle. There were only 15 motorcycles at most behind us here to where if she would have waited 10 to 15 seconds, she would have been able to turn into her driveway without impeding the traffic of any of these motorcycles. But she couldn't wait any longer and she decided to pull directly in front of these motorcyclists causing a severe accident. You guys need to be prepared. You need to understand that when you're in a car, when you're distracted, one split second of you being distracted is a matter of life and death to somebody else. Right up, uh, I don't know if anyone else has called yet. Someone pulled out in front of a bunch of motorcycles. We got three people down. Uh, there's a cop already here. Uh, as soon as you make a left on 616, like you're coming up the hill from Struthers, right past like Villa Maria Road. No, before that, way before that. All right, so. I just wanted to stress to you guys the absolute importance of staying calm in a situation like this, making sure that you are able to control your emotions and make sure that you are communicating well with the police and first responders to make sure that you can get somebody there keeping a clear head and being able to focus on making a phone call, making a decision when your stress level is at a very high peak so that you can be effective in making sure that we get the support and the care that we need there for these people that went down. A lot of people's emotions were running very high. I do apologize for the quality of this last video here. It was uh, filmed on my phone. I turned my GoPro off. So uh, one of the big things here is, like he said, is to remain calm. Uh, that's gonna be a big one. You saw some of the people at the very beginning freaking out and then standing next to their bikes. And while there's quite a bit of people there to offer assistance, um, if you have that medical training and you can't keep everything in because it might be a best friend, might be something that is important to you or somebody that's important to you. Um, it's going to be difficult, but in order to really help the situation, we need to remain calm. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So part of uh, what we do here is, you know, we have the acronym and we're going to kind of keep it there, but we do have that rescue card. It comes with our rescue packs and everything. But uh, the main thing here, yes, call 911 or tell someone to call 911. That is going to be a big one. That's going to give you something to do. So this is the mentality we should have, and this is what we this is our goal is to remain calm, and this is the objective. This is what we can start going. And the reason why we do that is to start that chain of survival. Okay, so if that person is truly injured and truly damaged, surgery is going to be the thing that's going to save their life, not 
you know, maybe wishing and taking them home and then hoping things just kind of magically happen. If they have a broken femur, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do well uh, without surgery. So we wanna get that going. So we wanna get uh, EMS, so dispatchers, they call fire EMS, EMS shows up, ambulance is there, they take them to the hospital, surgeons get there, and that's how we start it. And so that's a huge thing that you can do if you can't uh, actually stop major bleeds or do the rest, calling 911 is perfect. And if, if you do have that medical training telling somebody to call 911, because we do have that issue of the bystander effect of people just not doing anything because they're assuming somebody else will. So it's taking a leadership role, either doing it or telling someone to do it, delegate it out is very important. So here we go. Uh, staying calm is uh, very important during a motorcycle crash because adrenaline, adrenaline's gonna come out. You know, you get into that fight or flight, you start to feel that. I, t I typically feel it right in the chest. I feel it right here. It's kind of like a warm, it's kind of like a like a, my nerves are starting to do this, okay? So adrenaline obviously comes from the adrenal glands, but um, or yeah, uh, epinephrine, adrenaline, whatever. Uh, but I start feeling it here. Once I start feeling that warmness, that means something's going on. Cortisol, all these different things are just stress hormones going. So once I recognize that, I now start saying, okay, I gotta do something. Body wants to do something, let the body do something instead of thinking about it. And that's what typically happens when people aren't remaining calm. They're like, oh my gosh, catastrophizing, things are going on. Let's go ahead, yes, bring it down, body, let's go. Okay, so make sure, we can do that, your pupils will dilate, get more information, it's, you're just gonna go, fight or flight. So training dependence, now this is one of those things that we talk about when it comes to emergency uh, maneuvers with swerving and emergency braking and practice, practice, practice. Uh, you're, you're going to go down to the lowest level of your training. So if you've never gotten training in emergency response, your body's gonna go right to that, and that's gonna be a panic. If you have some training, at least with this, okay, what we're talking about here is having that awareness of understanding of, hey, call 911. If all of a sudden you're like, I don't know what to do, but I do know I need to call 911, that's gonna be a big thing because you could be like, I wanna solve all these problems with bleeding and you know, everything is going crazy, but the adrenaline, everything is just, it's just I, I can't think, I can't think, but all I can think about is calling 911. If you can practice that, well, don't practice calling 911. It's kind of like a prank call, but you know that 911 is the thing. Same thing with swerving. I don't know what to do, I, but I know how to swerve. Perfect. That's great. So post-crisis emotion, that's going to be a big one, okay? So after emergency, this is when you can actually process this, those emotions, and that's going to be a little bit tough. If you don't know how to do that yourself already, even in smaller situations, for me, losing my keys was a small thing. For a very long time, it was kind of like a big thing, and I realized that there were some triggers back in the past. My dad taught me that behavior and uh, processing it later on in life has been very helpful. But uh, compartmentalizing, being able to process things, how I process things is I actually go for very long walks, okay? Very fast, long walks with some music with no lyrics. Constantly walking, that pace is more of a meditative pace. And then I'm able to think through things. I think about the scenario, I think about what I did, what I could have done better, what I did that I'm proud of, that I'm grateful that I'm here even thinking about it, okay? Because that's, you know, whoever was in that incident might not be able to think anymore because they're not here anymore. So afterwards, go ahead and do that. I like to jump in the pool. I journal a lot. I do a, break, a stream of consciousness. I just do, uh, I put on my voice notes um, on my phone. I just start talking. And then I do, I, afterwards I go back and I check the grammar, make sure everything's fine. But allowing myself to talk is very important. I also go through therapy once a month for the last five, six years. So calling 911 for help, like I said, this is gonna be a big one, but we're gonna go over a little bit of kind of what's happening here is that if you are by yourself, you're gonna, be, you're gonna have to be the one to call 911. So if you're, you're by yourself and you crash, you're gonna have to call 911. If you're with one other person, you're gonna have to call 911 because if they're unconscious or whatever, they might not be able to. So that's very important. And if you crash yourself and you can't get to your phone because you just can't and somebody pulls up and they're like, what do I do? It's like, call 911. I'm telling you to call 911 because I'm like laying on the ground. I can't do much. Thankfully, you're here to do that. So very important immediately, like I said, for the chain of survival. Dispatcher support. So dispatchers are, are, are actually trained, it's their job to help guide you through the system, through the, through the thing. So think of it as like a customer service rep for any other product that you have out there. Like say you, you got some bedding and didn't, it, you, got, you wanted a king but it came out as a queen, you call them up, they hopefully can solve your problem, get things going, and they know the system because it's their company. Same thing with uh, EMS and, and 911. You call them up, be like, hey, I crashed. And they're like, okay, so are you bleeding? Do you have, like, do you feel like you have any broken legs? Where are you located? They start to guide you through that process. So if you're in that emotional response and you can't really, like, I don't know what to do, they're gonna be the one that's gonna be hopefully non-emotional, 
Okay, sometimes there's some bad bad apples out there, but I haven't, I haven't met one yet, but I've heard about it. I've seen some Dateline stuff. Um, but professional intervention, like I said, this is very important, is once you actually get people en route, I'm all blurry right here, when you get people en route, um, what's gonna happen, come on, come on, we're doing this live, there we go. Once you get people en route, um, they're gonna be able to start calling the trauma surgeons, the orthopedic people, um, the, I don't know all the names for those types of surgeons, but the people that work on, with nerves, they've worked with skin, like, you know, it's all that stuff. You get all these people that are gonna be able to start showing up depending on how severe things are and at least get the hospital ready for you, okay? So it's very important. So instructing somebody, call 911 right here. So this uh, makes a lot of sense if you are the trained leader in this. So if you have the medical knowledge to be able to solve the problem with the, uh, the person on the ground, with the rider on the ground, they're hurt. Let's say you know how to use a tourniquet and the person next to you, like a friend or just a bystander, does not know how to use a tourniquet. You have a tourniquet, you have a trauma kit, you have all those things. It wouldn't be good for you to call 911 and sit there on the phone while the person's bleeding out. So you start to utilize people with the, their base knowledge. Like, hey, you know how to use a phone, you know how to call 911, and we know that dispatchers will walk you through it. Here, you go call 911, let me grab my tourniquet and I'm gonna go do this. And I could talk to you, I could say, hey, this person's bleeding, you know, this is where we're at, if you still have that knowledge, but you become that leader. You become that person that is actually delegating things. And if you know what needs to get done, like call 911, stopping major bleeds, well, obviously, you know, ensure your own safety, stop major bleeds, and quickly assessing. If you know the steps, you can start delegating those steps to other people that might just need to have the knowledge of getting the blanket out.